Hi, I'm Joe Foster. Kenjite is an advanced martial art that is intelligent in its design, comprehensive in its curriculum, and offers very effective martial arts techniques. In short, it's a martial art that works for everybody and not just those in their prime. Now, Kenjite is divided into eight elements of learning. Fundamentals, self-defense, weapons, which are handheld weapons, forms, sparring, special skills, ancillary skills, and theory. In Kenjite, we also offer a bonus section for information additional to what's in the regular programming. Now, this particular video is going to take a look at Kenjite's knife or edged weapon. We're going to borrow a sample from the self-defense section, from the handheld weapon section, and also from the bonus section. And the purpose of this is to let you understand that we do a lot of things that are quite different in this particular martial art. Now this video will seem to be a little bit long perhaps and I hope you have the attention span to hang in there and watch the whole thing because there's a lot of good training tips and information available throughout this video that I think you'll find very interesting and educational. So let's take a look now at Kenjite's knife. Once again, back to my talk earlier in the belt. Anytime a person pulls a weapon, your best defense is don't be there, run. Get out of the way. If you can't do that, put an obstacle between you and the person with the weapon. If you can't do that, there's no obstacle available. You can't run for whatever reason, you then defend yourself. Blades are very scary. There is a good chance you will get cut when you're defending yourself against a knife. Knives are very quick and they're very lethal. Whether it's puncturing with straight on thrusts or slices coming across having deep severances of things like arteries and veins. With the blade itself and in dealing with the blade, if at all possible, I don't want to expose the inside of my arms to that blade because on the return action of his blade, I run the risk of cutting my arteries and veins. Remember, they're on the inside. I see some martial arts these days doing defenses where the knife is coming in and they're coming forward and they're trying to just jam down like this. And the person is just gonna pull that knife straight back and you're gonna get cut in a very serious way. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're doing these defenses. Divert, seize, control, disarm. Get that knife going away from you by redirecting it and moving your body out of the way. Two things at once, divert, seize. You wanna get that knife, you wanna control it and then take it away. Do not worry about punching and beating this guy up and leaving that knife unattended. Moving okay. along, circling steel. So that would be a roundhouse slash. When you're in this position and the person is coming to swing at you, once again, if you can get out of the way to avoid being hit and attack it on the return side, sometimes you're luckier that way. However, what they're not expecting is he sees a target here, which means when he's stepping in to swing and do all these cuts, he's aiming for here. So don't be here, all right? So change your angle of entry, move, get out of the way. But what I wanna do in this particular technique is when he comes in to swing, if I can anticipate it, I wanna get inside really, really tight. That's important, so you're past the blade but I haven't done much to him yet. So if I can guide that arm away, that would be that divert, I'm gonna punch him in the face. Now, I believe it was Mike Tyson that said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> well, if he's busy thinking about hacking me to pieces with the blade, if I can get a good shot off to his face and drive him into next week with that fist, it slows down his intention to continue or it at least stun him enough to allow me to control the weapon, okay? So here comes the roundhouse swing. You step inside, you punch the face. Now when you punch that face, you obviously aim at the face. When we train with a partner, you're going to punch through the face on the inside. That's the divert. So I'm past the weapon, diverted it away, and if you look, I'm inside the arc. And essentially, I've got my hands up. So this movement here is protecting, but it's an outward extended block, okay? so. Uh, sorry, circling steel, come in this way from this position and punch. 
Now I have to begin to control the person. So what I'm going to do is slide both hands down to grab the handle and the hand of my opponent. At the same time, I take the right leg and buckle against with the knee buckle the inside or the front of his knee there. That keeps him off balance. I'm going to change my angle of entry by dropping my left foot back. Drop into a twist stance. And now I'm square to him. I can take that knife out, but if he's still struggling, I'm going to kick him in the groin as I take that knife. Notice the hand came down. As I land, I cut up into the throat. Let it pass the one side. Rear cross cut the other side of the throat. Buckle that leg and use the handle. That's right, you've got two ends of a knife. Use the metal handle or wooden handle across the spine as you take it to the ground. I now have the knife and I would cover up. Okay, try the other side. Circling, I uh, guess up here, circling steel. Step in, block and punch, so you're in deep, bang. Immediately, that's the divert, here's the seize. Notice you're pushing hard against that leg, controlling that arm and hand, handle of the blade. Drop step, drop in a twist, change your angle. You're gonna take the knife as you kick the groin here, cut up into the throat. Rear cross cut, the throat on the other side, buckle in, in with the handle, and cover out. Circling steel. The weapon of choice for handheld weapons in first degree black belt is your first edged weapon or single knife. Single knife meaning one knife. Now your single knives can have a single edge. They could also have a double edge. Double edge meaning that you've got the cutting edges on both sides. When you are fighting with a knife, knives are very lethal. They can do a lot of damage. So you have to be super responsible for this, but if, if you're gonna apply the techniques, you might as well be very lethal with it. People think that knives are just pretty much for slashing. They're not, there's a lot you can do with a blade. First of all, how do you hold it? He's in a fighting position with the edge out this way, it's good for intimidation. The person can actually see that you have a blade and you can try and direct them to do what you want them to do, maybe scare them away. This is great for intimidation, but it's actually easier to disarm him when he has his blade out. If he was fighting a person with another blade, he would put his other side forward. So he would always have the edge side forward, taking away a lot of the targets against this incoming knife. Okay, left side forward. Now from this position here, he can have that blade out, but he can also do a reverse grip where the blade is now in. Because he has a double-edged blade, if you notice he's keeping it away from his arm. This is a single edge that I have, so it doesn't matter as much if it's resting against your arm, but you definitely do not want an edge that's, that's sharp against your arm. So he keeps it out away from his body. Now what could he do with this one? In terms of cutting, he could step through and slash, for instance, taking into the throat. He could do the same thing, then drop down and pop the groin. So there, and he strikes down into the groin or stomach. So people think, oh, okay, I've got a blade and I'm gonna do all this cutting. You can also do a lot of other things because you can focus on the handle. A lot of handles are made of metal. So picture the metal taking a full shot to the face or sternum, step through punch. So you can punch with it. And if he did the uh, blade out, he could also hammer with it. So he could come in and hammer, he could hammer down. So for instance, if I've done something where the person is going towards the ground, I can use that action to do a lot of damage as well. Now here are some of your basic strikes. The most basic one is a thrust. So he's gonna step through fighting position, step through thrust there. And you notice he's doing a rotation of that blade, especially if you're going to something like the rib, it'll fit better. Again, go. 
and he doesn't leave it there, he pulls it out. The reason he's pulling it out is you don't want it to get stuck, you want to come back on the same trajectory. If you change the trajectory while it's in the body, a lot of times it can be stuck in the bone. Okay, one more time, go. All right, now, staccato striking or rapid striking, same idea if you're going to the torso, go ahead. So he'll just keep stabbing you a whole bunch of times until he's decided you've had enough because many punctures, you only have 10 fingers and if you have 11 holes, you're in a lot of trouble, okay? So you've got a basic thrust. Now you have a basic slash. He's gonna step through and slash down. So that's coming down on a downward diagonal. You could also slash up with a reverse diagonal. That's a tough angle to defend against. If the person's standing there, you cut up this way against it, cut up that way, so you've got your slashes. Now, as opposed to simply slashing down and staying there, he could do the reverse of it, where he comes back on the same trajectory, so he gets a double slash out of it. So he goes down and up, same line. So that's the downward diagonal, but it's returning. Again, double slash, go, one and two. What most people see, though, is the figure eight. So he's gonna step through and make a figure eight slash, one in on the return, so it's down, then he's gonna go high and come down again. One more time, go, one and two. Now to practice these strikes, we do a little eight point drill, which actually has a ninth point, and it's just to teach you your angle. So he's got his knife up in this position, he's gonna slash down and he's gonna come up. Then he's gonna come up from the other way and back down, across horizontally and back, then up, down, and the ninth, which is there. So those are different angles in terms of width, height, and depth. So it was down and up, up and down, in and out, up and down this way, and thrust. So those are some of your basic strikes. Now with the block, with the blade, he can attack the incoming weapon by slashing. So for instance, to say it's a roundhouse punch or something like that, you'd simply slash the arm, step in and slash, yep. Or retreat, whatever the angle happens to be. One more time, go. From there, but he could also block with it, which gets into the idea of a press. And the press, the idea is you're getting it up just like you're blocking, but you're not necessarily cutting. Okay, step in, block, go. All right, there's a press. We could also do that against the throat where you're coming in to take somebody down. And you will see some of these movements in the actual self-defenses. So let's now take a look at some of the knife handheld weapon self-defenses. So your first actual knife self-defense when you have the knife and your opponent does not. Now in the action of the basics there are different ways we can acquire this knife. We can acquire it from our waist. So maybe you've got the knife sitting in your waist this way or maybe it's even in some kind of sheath and you're going to drop back and pull it out ready to go. You could have the knife for instance up inside a sleeve or maybe the sheath is strapped to your forearm and you're loosening it to get it out ready to go. Aha! Surprise! It's in the other hand. You could do the same thing if you had a high boot, pulling the boot uh, knife out of the boot that way and you can practice speed drops. The knife could be hidden in the back. Same idea where you're going to pull the knife out and you're dealing with the guy and you're going to step through and do whatever it is you're going to do to the guy. So you could practice drawing your knife from your waist, from your back, from a tall boot. You could draw from a, a sheath and a sleeve of an arm or inside a jacket. Uh, more military style if you've got it across the top where you're releasing the grip and taking the knife out or even taking it high this way to do whatever it is you're going to do. Okay, either way, I have the blade. Since he is unarmed, we're going to do all of our self-defenses reverse grip because it's harder for him to disarm. It's also harder for him to detect that I actually have a knife. So I've acquired the knife. All of these techniques could be interchangeable for edge out as well, and you're welcome to practice that too. But in terms of requirement, it's a reverse grip at this point. So the same action, descending knife, descending single knife, he steps in, clubs down, you're gonna get underneath, you're gonna block against that arm at or above the elbow, you're gonna take the handle, picture a metal handle, full tilt into the sternum right there, potentially breaking the xiphoid process right into there. You're immediately gonna cut up through the body this way, turn it over and puncture into the stomach and pull it out. So you're gonna puncture in like that. You're gonna slide this up tracking, do a reverse cut up, hooking the neck as you cross behind in this position, 
You're going to snap down between the shoulder blades and then you're going to side kick the far knee and cup up. Okay, let's try the other side. From here, attack comes in, get underneath, step and strike. Bam! This way. Cut up through here, puncture this way. Reverse cut here, big stab into the spine, break that knee and cover out. Okay? First knife self defense, descending single knife. In the bonus section of second degree brown belt, the projectile weapon is throwing blades. When we're defending ourselves using a knife, a lot of the knives that we use, this is a cold steel knife for example, we'll have a handle with the blade uh, built in where the hilt is and the tang goes in and you learn to defend yourself. Uh, that's in close quarter combat. Uh, other types of blades we use in self defense, here's a double edged dagger, same idea. With the handle, this is a little bigger sog, more of the jungle type survival knife. These are good for combat and every once in a while they're, they're good to throw just to experience what it's like throwing these, but a lot of times these types of knives will break when you throw. So there are specific throwing knives that you can get. Uh, they tend to be one piece steel. This is an Eagle Eye 440 stainless steel. So if you notice that the handle and the blade, it's actually out of the same cut. That way, over time, with a lot of use, you're not going to see much in the way of breakage. And in terms of throwing knives, there are different types of throwing knives as well. If you notice the shape of this one, it's got an edge here and a point. There's a little groove here and a place in here for releasing or grabbing where a little longer one, once again, has the edge on both sides with the point and then it's a little flatter along the back. Now I can throw a knife with no spin or spin. If I'm really close to somebody and I'm using one of my fighting blades and I decide to throw it forward because of the distance you may not have time to get a revolution so it's better to have a no spin. When I'm throwing something with a no spin I slide my thumb along the back which prevents that rotation from happening. So this type of throwing knife is a little more conducive for doing that. Whereas if I'm going to throw the knife itself and I want revolution to happen then I would take a slightly different type of grip and we'll talk about that in a second. Now we're focusing on throwing knives but we'll take a quick peek also at throwing axes because they're also a throwing blade. You can get your standard axe with a longer wooden handle uh, with axes, you'll see throwing with two hands, you'll see throwing with one hand. Um, in this particular case, this SOG has the edge on the front point on the back. There are variables that affect how you throw. One of them has to do with distance. Now in terms of distance, when I am throwing, I want to find my magic distance that when I'm releasing this blade, especially if you're doing the spin as it's rotating, that when it actually hits the target it's hitting straight on. And you'll discover that if you end up where you're throwing it and you're hitting with the handle, it means that your distance is off. If you're hitting and it's coming forward and it's hitting with the blade end here instead of the point, it means you're just a little too close and you have to back up a bit which gives the revolution time to happen. Versus the other way where if it's hitting this way you have to move forward in order to get it sooner into the action. Okay, so one of the things is distance. What about stance? There are some excellent knife throwers out there on YouTube. I highly recommend you watch them because they've got great teaching tips and the reason we do projectile weapons in Kenjite is to help people with hand-eye coordination, to give them confidence with blades so that when they're fighting and they also learn how to throw it. Uh, one of the world champion guys, uh, Jason Johnson for instance, he likes to stand with his same leg forward and throw and when he throws he does almost a diagonal downward cross cut, more like a katana cut as he's releasing his blades. Another guy, uh, Adam Seladin, 
He likes to have the opposite leg forward and releasing it more with impulse, more like a baseball throw. So who's right? Well, they're both right. They're doing what works for them, and I suggest you play with stances and footwork and do what works for you and be consistent with your stance positioning. Your distance, once you find that magic distance, be consistent with that. Then we get into arm action. When I'm actually throwing these things, I don't want to have all kinds of little variables going on with an arm wiggling all over. The arm action is basically just simply straight and follow through, okay? Here, no funny twist of the arms or anything else because that's a lot for the brain to calculate when it's not sticking into the wall. If you are throwing it, you also don't want to have a lot of wrist action because once you flick your wrist in the action, you may think it's cool to have extra revolutions, but that's, once again, harder to correct. So be consistent, let the blade do the work for you as you're releasing to let it go out and follow through. So as little wrist as possible. If the blade is hitting this way against the target, it means that you have that wrist action going on and you, you need to correct that. Now in terms of throwing axes and the throwing blade, well, like you're shaking hands. You put it forward just like you're shaking hands and you're releasing straight back above and throwing through. Now with a throwing blade, you tend to point more at the target where you want it to go, unless you're far, far away and you have to have arc in the throw. But you want to point where you want it to go. Whereas a throwing axe, you tend to release a little bit higher up to let that revolution start to happen. Okay? So we're going to go in now into the target board and just take a look at some of these throwings. So inside uh, the dojo at this location, we have a target board. This board is made of barn pine. Uh, they're one foot wide uh, strips, but there's no nails or screws where the blade itself would be making contact. There's a frame in behind that everything is screwed into place. The reason we don't have the nails or screws for obvious reasons that if the blade is hitting a screw straight on, it'll end up chipping away here. Some people like to put cardboard in front with the target itself so you get feedback in terms of how the blade is hitting. Uh, if you have an opportunity to get an old piece of tree trunk, you can set that up on a stand as well. You could certainly take these targets outside. If you're going to throw outside, please uh, don't throw them at live trees. Uh, if you happen to be walking through the woods and you come across a dead tree, then it's okay to throw at something like that. And, and certainly make sure that you're not just for excitement throwing these at animals trying to hurt them. If, if you do that, you're an idiot. Okay, so when we throw, the idea is to have the blade hit straight on. That's a pretty good measurement of a great throw, great arm action, great body positioning, great distance. If, as I explained earlier, if it's hitting this way, it means that the revolution wasn't able to continue, which means you need to back up a little bit in order to have it hit. If it's hitting this way, it means that you're actually too far away and it's over rotated so if you just move your body up it will hit sooner. If it's hitting with a flat edge like this it means you've got some kind of rotation going on with your wrist or release which means that it's not following true to the target. Okay so let's uh, take a look at some throws. Here we go. Once again, remember, consistency in the arm throw, no wrist, take your time and release. And that's how you throw knives. With the axes or tomahawks, remember that the release is going to be a little bit different. Once again, no wrist action, nice smooth through, but maybe just release a little bit higher and let that rotation do the work for you. Uh, five steps for me walking out. One, two, three, four, and five. So it's about this position. I load it above my head. Make sure you don't catch the back of your head by going on an angle and tearing or cutting an ear. I line it up with the board and simply release. Second time. 
amber leaves. Once again, if you looked, I held it just a little bit higher. From this position, consistency of throwing, remember, like the handshake, straight above the head, straight out. No wrist action, reach back and fire. Once again, reach out and fire. And that's how that works. Now, when you're taking blades, whether it's axes or knives out, don't pull them side to side. You'll take a lot of the chips out or potentially wreck the blade. Blade lift it up and down, up and down, wiggle it and come back. There's your face down, face down to the center line. So I had it at 16 feet roughly and it went back to 24 feet. So that tells me the revolutions for me vary and if I know those magic numbers I can be consistent in my throw. Face down, face down. Now I could do the same type of throw using two hands. I've gotten rid of one of the axes where I simply bring it above my head this way and fly. So you can do a double hand throw, you can do single hand throws. You can also do underhanded throws, but I think you should start with the most basic beginner type of throw. Now we'll change the distance so that it hits with the spike end of this Sog Hawk axe. So I was back closer to 16 feet, I can move up a little bit, or I could move back farther. Same release, nothing changes, hits to the other end. There it goes face up. There it goes face up. Once again, it's based on understanding what your distances are to know how the throwing axe or the throwing knife will hit your target. Safety is very important. Make sure that when you're throwing these, nobody is near the target or off to the sides because of rebounding. Make sure they're well behind you or well off to the side. When you're throwing, aim small, think small, be safe, have fun. Congratulations, you made it through this video. I know it was a long one, but I don't mind sharing this type of information. Hopefully you found it educational and useful. Perhaps it will help you grow as a martial artist in your country. I should point out that the technical information that we just gave you came from Kenjite International's online learning program. This is available through our international website, www.kenjiteinternational.com. If you get a chance, check out the site, learn about Kenjite, learn why we're a different kind of martial art. Maybe even consider doing some online training yourself. We're always looking for experienced martial artists from any country, from any martial arts background, who might be interested in learning Kenjite and helping us introduce Kenjite to their country or region of the world. If this might be you, please contact us. Like, share, follow, subscribe, ring the bell, do all of those things that help us grow and encourage us to make more videos just like the one you're seeing now. And finally, what I really enjoy is when somebody leaves a constructive comment because those comments help me choose what type of videos we're going to provide and help us all grow as martial artists on planet Earth. Thanks for watching.